how you can help family. I hope you can hear me okay. Today we're reading 2 Chronicles chapter 25, Evaluation of Amaziah. Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother was Jehoiadan from Jerusalem. Amaziah did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, but was not wholeheartedly. When Amaziah was well established as king, he executed the men who had assassinated his father. However, he did not kill the children of the assassins, for he obeyed the command of the Lord written in the book of the law of Moses. Parents must not be put to death for the sins of their children, nor the children for the sins of their parents. Those worthy of death must be executed for their own crimes. Victory over Edom. Another thing Amaziah did was to organize the army, assigning leaders to each clan from Judah and Benjamin. Then he took a census and found that he had an army of 300,000 men, 20 years old and older, all trained in the use of a spear and shield. He also paid about 7,500 pounds of silver to hire 100,000 experienced fighting men from Israel. But a man of God came to the king and said, O king, do not hire troops from Israel, for the Lord is not with Israel. You will not help those people of Ephraim. If you let them go with your troops into battle, you will be defeated no matter how well you fight. God will overthrow you, for he has the power to help or to frustrate. Amaziah asked the man of God, But what should I do about the silver I paid to hire the army of Israel? The man of God replied, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah discharged the hired troops and sent them back to Ephraim. This made them angry with Judah, and they returned home in a great rage. Then Amaziah summoned his courage and led his army to the Valley of Salt, where they killed 10,000 Edomite troops from Seir. They captured another 10,000 and took them to the top of a cliff and threw them off, dashing them to pieces on the rocks below. Meanwhile, the higher troops that Amaziah had sent home raided several of the towns of Judah between Samaria and Beth Haran, killing 3,000 people and carrying off great quantities of plunder. Idolatry of Amaziah, verse 14. When King Amaziah returned from the defeating, excuse me, from defeating the Edomites, he brought with him idols taken from the people of Seir. He set them up as his own gods, bowed down in front of them, and presented sacrifices to them. This made the Lord very angry, and he sent a prophet to ask, Why have you worshipped gods who could not even save their own people from you? But the king interrupted him and said, Since when have I asked your advice? Be quiet now before I have you killed. So the prophet left with this warning, I know that God has determined to destroy you, because you have done this and have not accepted my counsel. Chapter, or excuse me, verse 17, Defeat of Judah by Israel. After consulting with his advisors, King Amaziah of Judah sent this challenge to Israel's king Jehoash, the son of Jehoaz and grandson of Jehu. Come and meet me in battle. But King Jehoash of Israel replied to King Amaziah of Judah with this story. Out in the Lebanon mountains, a thistle sent a message to a mighty cedar tree. Give your daughter in marriage to my son. But just then, a wild animal came by and stepped on the thistle, crushing it. You may be very proud of your conquest of Edom, but my advice is to stay home. Why stir up trouble that will bring disaster on you and the people of Judah? But Amaziah would not listen. For God was arranging to destroy him for worshiping the gods of Edom. So King Jehoash of Israel mobilized his army against King Amaziah of Judah. The two armies drew up their battle lines at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by the army of Israel, and its army scattered and fled for home. King Jehoash of Israel captured King Amaziah of Judah at Beth Shemesh and brought him back to Jerusalem. Then Jehoash ordered his army to demolish 600 feet of Jerusalem's wall, from the Ephraim gate to the corner gate. 
He carried off all the gold and silver and all the utensils from the temple of God that had been in the care of obi Edom. He also seized the treasures of the royal palace along with hostages and then returned to Samaria. Death of Amaziah, verse 25. King Amaziah of Judah lived on for 15 years after the death of King Jehoash of Israel. The rest of the events of Amaziah's reign from beginning to end are recorded in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. After Amaziah turned away from the Lord, there was a conspiracy against his life in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But his enemies sent assassins after him, and they killed him there. They brought him back to Jerusalem on a horse, and he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Now, a lot of this chapter is from Second Kings um, chapters 12 and 14. So, so some of what I read sounded familiar. That's probably why for those who um, have been listening in all along. So I just also wanted to add, um, I've been reading um, a little bit quieter. I had to have a surgery on Friday. And I was like, oh, I'm just not going to read <laughs> because it kind of hurts. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about pressing on. You know, when things get hard or seem difficult, it's so much easier to just want to give up and throw the towel in and, and just say, forget it, you know. But if you really believe in something and God, you believe God has called you to something, don't give up. When it gets difficult, you know, maybe step back a little bit, evaluate your situation and um, devise your plan, you know, work out those action steps and, and get to and get to it. You know, the enemy wants to distract us and make us think that we're not capable of doing certain things. But if God's called us to it, then that settles it, right? It's just getting our our plan in place to move forward. And sometimes that's doing things that seem harder out of our comfort zone, right? Things that things that don't maybe come natural or aren't as easy, but you know, he can strengthen you, he can help you, he can guide you with the right hand of his righteousness. He knows you, he cares for you. So persevere when things get tough. Don't give up. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. And um, if he's called you to something, he's going to equip you to complete the mission. Amen? So thanks for listening. And we'll be back tomorrow with chapter 26. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye for now.